Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and this is me, Michelle Ann Tackett. This is Sean. And welcome to Tackett and Tackett Entertainment. In this segment, we're talking about Nintendo's 2021 and possibly one game for 2022. But first off, we're going to get to Bayonetta 3. This game was announced at the 2017 Video Game Awards, and it's went quiet ever since. But you know what? I don't mind. Platinum games take all the time you need. But a lot of people are saying that this game could come out as early as summer of 2021. I think, no, I think it's going to be in the early fall. I think it's going to revolutionize the action genre. It's going to be a huge open experience while keeping the heart of Bayonetta. But I think they're also going to add some new gameplay elements. I think the review score will be between a 92 and a 94. And I think that the sales for this game will be between 3 to 5 million. What do you think, Sean? Do you agree? or? Yeah, and honestly, I think this will be the best of the Bayonetta games. I think it'll be really big, huge... And I really think it a set. I think it uh it may be the last of the Bayonetta games. I think I think Platinum. Uh, I think they'll wrap up the trilogy quite nicely, and then they'll move on to other games like Astral Chain and stuff. That's a very interesting point. They could do that. Bayonetta being a trilogy would be kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. How much it will sell that depends. Hopefully, the interest of the fans. Well, people are very interested in it, and the second one is done very well. Next up is Monolith Soft's new IP. We've only seen the artwork for this game, but already it looks incredible. I think it's going to come out in the summer of 2021. I think it's going to set a new standard for action RPGs. It's going to look like Skyrim meets Xenoblade. I think the critic response would be between an 87 or 90, and I think the sales will be 2 to 4 million. I think this is going to be a big title for Monolith Soft. It probably will, but they've got more than just one game under, so yeah. who knows what they'll be. Yeah, who knows when they'll come out, but yeah. uh, I since this one was announced in August of 2017, I kind of think about four years is good enough, you know. Well, next up is... Metroid Prime 4. Metroid Prime 4 may be the most anticipated of all these games. I think there's a long wait for this game. I think it's not going to come out until late 2022. Yeah. But when it does, I think it's going to set a new standard for first-person shooters. It's going to revolutionize the genre. And it's going to do for Metroid what Breath of the Wild did... For Zelda. I could see this getting between a 95 and a 97. I can see it selling between 8 to 12 million copies. And it can sweep the Game of the Year awards. Because Retro Studios is really hiring some big guns for this game. I mean, do, do you think that it could come out later? Because I think it's going to come out in late 2022. That may be it. Honestly, I'm thinking maybe early... 2023. It could be 2022. How well do you think it'll do? Because Metroid games have been getting pretty popular in the last few years. Well, again, hopefully, I just hope the game doesn't get so overhyped that the hype, no matter how good it'll be, people could be let down by it. So, I hope they don't overhype it too much. Well, I'm excited for it. Metroid Prime was the game that actually got me into the Metroid games. And I expect it to be great. I just hope people don't overhype it so much that when they play it, they're like, ugh, this is disappointing. I mean, I won't, but you know how some people are. Yeah, I'll just ask a certain game that just came out, Cyberpunk 2077. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's that's definitely a real concern. That's very good analysis there, Sean. Um, I think that's why Retro was going full out, because they know the kind of pressure it is to deliver a game like this. So I, I don't think there's too much to worry about. Let's, you know, remember to keep expectations realistic, folks. So, And hopefully, since we're talking about 2021 predictions, I'm hoping we get another Donkey Kong game. While we may have to wait on Metroid, they're not just working on one. Yeah, we know Retro's working on more than one game. I hope it's another Donkey Kong Country game. 
I really do. I ho I would love to see another one. That would be awesome because mm -hmm. Tropical Freeze is one of my favorite games ever. Retro, or excuse me, Retro. They're incredible at these games. So I, I hope there is a Donkey Kong Country 3. That, that would just make me so happy. So who knows? You know, I mean, Retro, I'm sorry to tell the naysayers this, but they do have more than one game in development. That's not an opinion. It's a fact. Mm -hmm. Now, what these games besides Metroid Prime 4 are, who knows? We'll probably we'll, we'll have to wait and see on that one. Breath of the Wild 2, probably the biggest one of all these, is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2. The first Breath of the Wild has become a phenomenon. The anticipation for this game is unreal. I think, now, when we're talking about this stuff, we're talking about it without, you know, like, COVID. Yeah. You know, yeah. if I mean, COVID yeah. gets really bad in Japan again, then it could delay these games. So let's just hope not, okay? You know, let's just um, hope for the best. Anyway, I think Breath of the Wild is going to be Nintendo's holiday 2021 title. From what I've been hearing, from little bits and pieces I've gathered together reading articles and stuff, Nintendo said there's going to be more physics, you know, more innovative things in the game. It's going to be bigger and have a much more in-depth story. If they can live up to that and hit the expectations, it will easily be 2021's biggest title. There will be no game that will be able to match Breath of the Wild 2. It is going to be a monster. I think it'll get between a 96 and a 98 by the critics. I think it's going to win. It'll pretty much win every Game of the Year award you can imagine. And it'll set a new standard. And I can see it selling between 25 to 30 million copies easily. And it's got a more of a horror element, which has got a lot of fans excited. So, wow. I mean, there's really going to be some great stuff that they're going to put in the game. What do you think? I think so, too. Like I said, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I mean, you know, maybe... Yeah. I know it's going to be a great game, but we'll see what kind of direction it takes. Honestly, though, I don't know if this would be a Switch title or not. I'm thinking more Switch 2. I could be wrong. This may be a Switch title, but I think because when the Switch 2 comes out, and it's coming out, Mario Kart, what else are they going to have? They need that other big... Uh, let's just face it, Metroid Prime, it's going to be for the Switch. It just is. But I think for the Switch 2, you're looking at it right there. I mean, because now it's official. Nintendo games, when they launch, they launch with Zelda titles. <laughs> they do. You know, suppose this did come out on the Switch. What would the Switch 2 have? I mean, so yeah. I'm thinking this could be the Switch 2. I mean, anything's possible. Yeah, the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time remake for the Switch 2. Because Grezzo is working on a new Switch game, and they usually work on Switch remakes. So, wow, that would be something. Also for the Switch, I, mean, the Switch, I would like to see a Star Fox game. Oh, wow, that would be awesome. It would. For some reason, every Nintendo system that comes out there's a franchise that is forgotten. That's just how it is. I hope yeah. Star Fox is not one of them. <sighs> yeah, Star Fox needs more love. Oh, it does. I love Nintendo. They're my favorite company, but sometimes they tick me the heck off with how they treat some of their franchises. So. Other predictions I would like to see. I would like to see some games we haven't heard of in a long time. I'd like to see another Punch-Out for the Nintendo Switch. That would be awesome. I would also like to see two games that nobody hardly ever talks about anymore. One is Excite Truck. That was on the Wii. I'd love to see a sequel to that. And Wave Race. Why doesn't nobody talk about that? That was just a forgotten gem. That was one of the best racing games ever. I would love to see an update or a sequel. Just something to show some love for that game. Wave Race was the game that set you know, the standard for water physics and stuff on the 64. And the GameCube version was really cool, too. Yep. And I still think that there's going to be an F-Zero game announced this year. Oh, I, I got my reasons why I think that. But look at the Perfect Dark and F-Zero accounts that popped up. And they turned out to be controlled by some porno person. But anyway, look what happened. Perfect Dark got announced. 
Who's to say that it can't happen with F-Zero? I hope so. And Mario Rabbids too. That would be awesome. That would be one of the most anticipated games of the year. I love Mario Rabbids. Well, anyway, that's it for Tackin' and Tack It. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell, thumbs up, leave a comment, join our Patreon, blog, Instagram and stuff. Have a good one, everybody. Bye.